Uh, man, it's so good to be with you this morning. Um, we are finishing our series uh, on B with Be Unified. And I would like to say that this is the first official series that I've ever preached in my life. <laughs> I did it. Bucket list. But uh, I'm excited about this because, uh, well, I get to share a lot of my experience in um, being with you guys, being unified, unity, the state of being united or joined as a whole, a family, a tribe, a body serving one purpose together. Each one brings something different, but all are valuable and effective. Now, a lot of us didn't grow up in church. Uh, we come from dysfunctional families um, where being unified and being honest and open and transparent is, didn't really maybe come easy, doesn't come easy, because it, I, I, I get it. You know, if you're open and transparent in your family, man, you get stomped on, you know, or, or you know, you've been open and transparent with, you know, friends or something that stabbed you in the back and told people about what you had just told them in confidence. So we get, you know, we, we trip out and, and we think, you know, we can't trust people and, and it's really like... Everyone for themselves because, you know, nobody really cares. Everybody's out for themselves anyway. And we could come in, you know, we could be thinking that. And I've been extremely selfish my whole life. I, uh, it's been a long journey for me, uh, for mastering the art of unity and camaraderie and, 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 and selflessness. But I found over many years that being teachable, being humble, willing to go above and beyond for a common goal with others is so much more effective than being a solo artist. Teamwork makes the dream work, amen? And that's with Life, doing life, that's where the phrase came, it takes a village. Because it does, right? It's so much harder doing life alone. And, and I know that there's people here in this room or definitely people that you know, whatever, that, that I like to isolate. It's like, it's almost like a... Uh, knee-jerk reaction or your, you know, your go-to is just to isolate because it's safer there. But the truth is, you're, it's dangerous in the sense of, well, I know that when, if I'm left to my own devices and I'm left with just me, myself, and I in this neighborhood I call my head, it's a bad place to be. It can be bad. So I need people in my life to be accountable to. I need people in my life I can bounce stuff off of. Hey, does this sound crazy? Yeah. Don't do it. You know? Well, how about, how about the people that go, you know, well, I read my Bible. You know, I love Jesus. I don't have to go to church to be a good Christian. I am the church. Besides, people suck. Does that sound familiar? If you haven't said it, you know somebody that has. So, and I get that, even though some of that's true, and I'm going to let you pick which part of that's true. The reason people aren't really growing in their faith and, to the full, and experiencing the fullness of what it's like to be a Christian is because they're not in community. 
That's where it happens. We learn and grow together as a community. Even though we, you know, we all got our own things going on. And like I was saying earlier, we all come from different places. And that's, I love it about this church. Some people have tattoos, some people don't. I wouldn't say that it's, I would say it's pretty equal. Some people are on parole, some people aren't. You know, I think we have a healthy amount of ex-cons in this service. Because they should be here, we should be here. Let me include myself in that. Some people have never been to jail. That's awesome. I don't know if you were here a couple weeks ago when we had Rich. He's the superintendent for the Assemblies of God. And his testimony is, I got saved when I was five and I've been walking with God ever since. Never drank, never used drugs. And I'm like, that blows my mind. You really? You've been following God since you were five and haven't fallen? Wow. But see, we connected, right? If you were here, dude, the guy's awesome. And him and I love each other. Like we're sitting in the office just chilling. I'm an ex-con, ex-junkie. You know what I mean? Like, and that's all good. I'm not saying, because you know what? One's not better than the other. We're just different, but we're, we're bound by the Spirit of God. That's what's so amazing about being a Christian. And, I mean, one of the amazing things, not the so amazing, but one of the amazing things is that people that are so, so different, we become, like, intimately close. Friends, family, brothers, sisters. It's awesome. But that's the spirit of God. That's the kind of God we serve. A person-to-person relationship is the very heart of the doctrine of the church. If you think faith is purely private, uh, me and Jesus kind of thing, you're fooling yourself. Who says you need to go to church to be a good Christian? Well, God does. Because there's two metaphors that are used when given, or two metaphors that are used when referring to the redeemed people of God. One is the body. Where all parts, great and small, work together and must function well for the body to be whole. 1 Corinthians 12 12 through 14 says this, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. See, we all are different, but we come together and we're one. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Because, you know, the body, it's connected. It's different, but it's connected. Another was. I could. Uh, That would be on Facebook. The second metaphor is family. We're sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. 2 Corinthians 6.18 says, And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. We're family. When we said yes to Jesus, we have been grafted in the family of God. And we share all the things of the Spirit together. Just like the Scripture said, see, not one part of my body is more important than the other. They're all important. Even the, one, even the, the, the parts of my body you can't see, right? Right? You can't see my lungs, 
or my liver or my spleen or my heart, but I need them. This body needs them. They're important, even though you can't see them. Every part of the body is important. Those of you that, that serve in this house behind the scenes, you're amazing. Thank you. Those of you who just, um, you know, maybe you're not serving in the church, but you're, you know, you've been the, have, you have the gift of encouragement, and you call brothers and sisters in this church and encourage them during the week. Thank you. You're valuable. That's valuable. Nobody sees it. Nobody's clapping for you. At a boy, at a girl. But God sees it. And it's important. And if you weren't there to make those phone calls of encouragement, the body would be not as good. The community of God's people, his family, are to be an intimate group of people doing life and relationship together. Just as the parts of the body operating by being connected to the body itself. Jesus being the head of the body and the head of the family. The head of the family. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says this. And let us consider how may we... How we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. See, in the New King James Version, it says, Do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Meaning, you should come to church. Why? Because we come here, we pray for each other, we love on each other, we speak truth into each other's lives, we fill each other up so we can go out there and pour it out. Amen? This is where we come to get filled. Now, I totally realize that God will fill you up at home and and I encourage everybody here to study the word on your own. Because God will speak things into your heart that just, when it's just you and him, man, it's, it's some gold. That will fill you. But something happens when we come together. Something happens when we come together in one accord. We worship God together. Then we love on each other. We might, sometimes we break bread together. And we speak life into each other. We have something to give. When our tank is full, we're ready to spill it. Amen? And if we come in tripping, stressed, feeling empty, I pray to God you leave here full. I pray to God you leave here overflowing with hope and joy and peace. That's what we're all about here at his place. Jesus, uh, Jesus was very clear with his disciples in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. He says, or it says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. See, Making disciples, even though, like, you know, uh, uh, you know a, a great preaching message is awesome. Come on, let's be honest. If I asked you tomorrow, 
what scriptures I use today, you'd be like, uh, I get it. So I have people go, man, when you said that last week, and I'm like, did I say that? We're, we're a message, although powerful, and I'm not taking anything away from that. Discipling is a whole different story. Discipling takes intimacy. Discipling takes me and you connecting on a regular basis, or you and them, whatever. A person that you see that is, at, they have seen something in you, wow, what is different about you? And you've shared your life, and you've built some trust, and oh, they're a Christian. Oh, they go to his place. I think I'll go try that place. Now you're, you're kind of doing life together a little bit more, a little bit more. It, it's discipleship. We do that in the program, too. Sponsorship. Sponsors. Go through the 12 steps with people. They've done it. They take somebody else through it. Discipleship's the same way. Hey, I've been walking with God a little bit longer than you. I've seen him do some things in my life that are amazing. Here's some scriptures that I've read. Or, you know, Ephesians is real good. Read that book, you know. And then, then we'll talk about it. Whatever. But you're there with them. Person to person, intimate. This is our common goal. Like the disciples then, we must first learn to be unified with each other before we can appropriately love people into unity with us. The focus, of course, always being Jesus Christ. Always. The church is the best place to grow as a Christian and a person. After all, you're around people that understand the value of forgiveness and grace, right? This should be a place where we can get better because we have a room full of people that understand forgiveness and grace. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. <laughs> because if we're not... We're just playing some religious game. And uh, unfortunately, there are some Christians that are just judgmental. And um, I don't ever want to be like that. I want to be all about love and acceptance and forgiveness because that's the way Jesus was. So this should be the safest place. For anybody to go, hey, I'm struggling. This is how it is. Will you pray for me? How'd you do it? Did you overcome it? Because there's no matter what you're going through, somebody in this room has either gone through it or going through it right now. It's all common. But we're here to help, and we do it because we're united with no judgment. There's no judgment. We just want to love you through it. We want you to know that you're not alone. That not, not only is God for you, but we're for you. And we believe in you, even if you don't believe in yourself right now. The word church in the Greek is ecclesia, meaning, call, meaning called out. So we've been called out from this world and into the kingdom of God. We are united as a family through the faith in Jesus Christ and our love for one another. And just like any other family, we will have issues. Don't think you're coming into a, a place where somebody might not rub you wrong. Where somebody might not make a mistake and say something, mm, they shouldn't have said. This, this is the perfect place for imperfect people. So there's, there's going to be, we'll have family issues here, but you know what? What does a family do? Hopefully, they resolve it. They resolve it in love because you know what? Conflict can be good. 
because conflict brings forth change. And if we approach things, especially in the church, with love and understanding and forgiveness, then conflict is good because somebody's growing through that. We will have trials, we will have victories, we will have sadness, and we will have joy together. Matthew 16, 13 through 18 says this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Jesus, Jesus declares he's going to build his church with Peter. Do you know how flawed Peter was? He was flawed. In fact, even after that, he denies Jesus three times and he cusses. I don't blankety blank know him. He was flawed. Jesus said, right on. But you believed that I'm the Messiah, I'm the Son of God, man, that was revealed to you by my Father. Flesh and blood ain't going to reveal that to you, but I can work with that. That's, that's what I can work with. Throughout history, we've seen nations and kingdoms rise and fall, but the church still stands. Why? Why? Because our leader and our purpose is eternal. Things come and go. Come on, you know how fickle the human race is. If something's really cool, and then it's not. Something's really in, and then it's not. But the church still stands. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Our purpose for meeting together is not to be a social club, even though it's fun to hang out with you. This community, His Place Westminster, is where we get to grow in God together, learn how to do life on life's terms together, learn how to do relationships together. We learn how to love, forgive, give grace, and exercise the gifts of God that he has given us and the fruit of the Holy Spirit together. You know, I, I'm pretty sure I'm on my sixth, maybe, I'm saying six, might be seven, but sixth year at his place. Let me tell you something. When I met all of you, those that have been around, you probably remember how completely jacked up I was. I mean, I was a mess. And I had already been in ministry. I had already been in ministry. I, 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 I relapsed and I, I went out and tried to see if the world had something for me because I got hurt in the church. And, and I isolated. Didn't reach out for help. I just medicated. And that's, I accept full responsibility for that. But when I went to his place, when it was a little church over in Huntington, and I heard Joe preach, man, I was like, whoa, this dude is real. I'd never heard anybody preach like him. And so I kept coming. And I was still smoking weed, but I kept coming. Because I knew, I mean, it's like, man, once you've tasted of the Lord, come on. 
I mean, I was sideways. I wasn't, I wasn't in the perfect will of God, but I was, I mean, God's in control. God's in control. He had control over the whole thing, and I just knew, I just knew I had to keep coming back to his place. So, finally, I got clean and sober again, right? Yeah, yay. And I, yeah. I go into Joe's office, and he's like, whoa, you're a whole different dude. I have never seen this man. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know. I'm ready. I believe God has something for me in my life. And I, I remember I had, this, I had this hole in my truck because, I don't know, I was driving and not paying attention. I, I don't know if I was loaded or not. And I, and I hit a, 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 a fire hydrant and it ripped the hole in my truck. My friends would laugh at me calling it the can opener. And I told Joe, I go, that's not a metaphor for my life. And he goes, yeah, it kind of is. And I thought about it, and I'm like, you're right. My life is chaos. But see, Joe and you loved me through it. It's been six years. And, and, and the whole way I learned, I know God put me here. Because I learned how to be a husband here. I learned how to be a dad here. I learned, to have, learned how to have integrity my buddy Paul Stream started the armory, and I, I, I got to exercise what having terms in my life looked like. I, I, I got to learn, I just got to learn and grow with you, and you guys loved me through it. I never once felt condemned here. I never once felt judged here. I just felt loved. And it's, and you know, there were times where you know, I know Johnny Ray for sure told me, like, man, I was just like, God, you better just do something with this dude. Please, God. I, I'm almost giving up going to pray for him. You know what I mean? Like, do something. But, but hey, man, God is good. And I, I say all like to say this. You're in the right place with the right people. Because we like to wear our stuff right out on our sleeve. Ain't none of us better than the other. We just strive to be more like Jesus. We strive to, to uh, walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Are we perfect at it? Nope. But that's where we want to live. That's where we focus on being, is living in the spirit, not in the flesh. And we allow each other to learn and fall and get up and keep going because we say, come on, come on. We believe in you. Keep going. Keep chasing after Jesus. Keep hanging out with us. You know, for the women, they have the fortress on Wednesday nights too. If you're, if you're wondering, like, what, how can I be a godly woman or... How can I learn more about being a, a godly wife or a godly friend? The, the fortress. There's godly women in there that have walked the walk, that want to walk with you. Just like the armory is for the men. We do it together. Because we've been given something by God that's so amazing, that has changed our lives forever. I mean, I got to tell you, I'm just so grateful I'm not either, I'm just, I'm not doing life in prison. I'm not, you know, there's so many places I could be right now. And I'm, I'm standing up here talking to you. I'm, I'm grateful. I learned that here. Another thing that I'm really proud of this church in particular is that we care about the wholeness I know God's given you a gift, and you're good at it, and you flow in it, but we care about your whole life, not just what you bring to the table in ministry. We want your home life good. We want you by yourself alone good. 
We want you uh, uh, to be employable and, you know, prosper. We really do. It's not just about what you can do for this church. That's what I got to tell you there right now. We care about the wholeness of your life. And that's what really turned me on about this church. Wow, you really do care if my kids are okay. And I'm paying enough attention to them. Or you really do care if my marriage is, is good. It's great, but you know, it's a marriage. <laughs> Just keeping it real. I love my wife. She's my best friend. <laughs> but we have such a we have an extended family as well. All over the world. Ephesians 3:6 says this mystery that is through the gospel of the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body and shares together in the promises in Christ Jesus. There are many Many of us all over the world. That's pretty awesome. I mean, we're a little bitty community in the vastness of Christianity. It's pretty awesome when you think about it. But we all share equally in the promises of God. Isn't that cool? No longer are there the chosen ones and the Gentiles. But we're all in the family. All of us. Not one better than the other, but we're all valuable, we're all important. Ephesians 3, 10 through 12 says this, his intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. We represent the many folds of the wisdom of God. Come on, somebody. I know that it, it is, it's a freaking miracle that you're here today. The wisdom of God is amazing what he could do with people like us. It's pretty awesome, and we represent that. That's how good he is. That's how far he's brought us. That's how big and powerful he is. And he ain't done with us yet. You know, back in Acts, when they were all in the upper room, and they started, you know, speaking in tongues, and 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 they were speaking other languages, but the other people could understand them. Like, that, that's, that's my language, and I understand that. See, the church was, I believe, was added to by two or 3,000 that day. That's a lot of people from all over the place with different backgrounds, different cultures, different. They had to learn how to live together. They had to learn how to be one, unified, together. They, they had to do it back then, too. And we, even though we come from different cultures and, and backgrounds, it's, it's like we just need to put that. We need to, here's what we need to do. Focus on what we resonate with. What brings us together, not what separates us. Amen? That's what we focus on. And we stay unified. See, when your main purpose is to worship and honor God with your life, church really becomes a weekly family reunion. But at this family reunion, we focus on Jesus. Yes, we are flawed. Yes, we sin. But we sharpen each other. We hold each other accountable, which is huge. We pray for each other. 
we hold each other up and share in the knowledge that God is not done with us yet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Philippians 1, 4 through 6 says this, In all my prayers for you, this is what Paul says. Paul says it so well. In all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is faithful to complete in you what he has started. That's amazing. Hold on to that. Hold on to that when you're going through your stuff. Hold on to that. And then call somebody. Talk to them about it. Or maybe call somebody and remind them, God ain't done with you yet. You hang in there. You're more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And with God, all things are possible. You see, there's no need for pride or low self-esteem in the church. The ground at the cross is level. First Corinthians 12, 15 through 20 says this. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to, to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. You see? We all do. We have different roles in our walk with the Lord and in our walk with the Lord together. Not all of us are going to do one thing, but you do have a thing. And you, do, you will do it well, and it will be a joy. If you don't know what that is, that's cool. I get it. But I would encourage you to figure it out because it'll bless you. It'll bless others, but it'll bless your life. And you fit out, you figure out where you fit in, and, and it's good, and, and you know you're doing the Lord's work. Man, there ain't nothing like it. That's a good feeling. It's like, ah, that's why I was put here on this earth. I get it. It's powerful. But there's no reason to be like, oh, well, you know, you know, I don't, I'm scared of talking to people, so I'm not going to be a preacher, so I'm not really any good for the church. I mean, that's a lie from the devil. Every single thing that's done in our community, whether that be, you know, passing out food, uh, uh, going to the hotel ministry, uh, uh, I mean, vacuuming the carpets, anything, it all is important. None, there's nothing that is higher than the other. Nothing. It's not being up here. This is just part of our deal. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to get to do this with you. It, it feels good. I know God's called me. But that's why I'm here. It's not because this is the, this is the position to have right here. People like me. You know what I mean? That's not a good reason to preach. <laughs> oh, gosh. 1 Corinthians 12, 21 through 27 says this. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. 
and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Hallelujah. It's so cool. It's so cool that none of us need to have egos or feel less than in this house. We're equals. That's awesome. That's freedom. That's such freedom. I love that. Thank you, God. Thank you for making it like that because we'd screw it up. And we have screwed it up before as far as the church and human beings and stuff. I think we're doing really good here in this house. Staying humble, being loving, being caring, and just trying to understand where somebody's at. and Loving them right where they're at no matter what. Relationships take time and commitment. Our relationship with God and each other are no different. To reap the benefit of community, you need to show up, pitch in, and hey, be friendly. If you're new here, you know, and you haven't really got plugged in, I don't, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable or anything, but hey, start hanging out. When we do the, the things like we did last weekend, you know, where we all go and break bread outside, like, just keep coming to that. And, you know, we, we do, like, uh, baptisms at the beach this summer, just cool stuff. We're going to do a picnic over here in the park. But I invite you guys to come because that's where we get to hang, you know. We all got life going on, right? There isn't a whole lot of time to hang these days, at least not for me. But I sure do like hanging out with you guys. So I invite you to come do that stuff with us. And I'll close with this. Jesus tells us in John 13, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You can't learn how to love from a distance. It's up close and personal. Like being parts of a body, always making room for more family and more parts. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you guys. Father God, thank you for this morning, for your word on unity. God, I pray that it, it spoke to them, your church. God, that we would be encouraged to really try to connect with each other and love on each other and fill each other up, God, so you can spill us out this week. God, shine your face on your people as they go out through their week. I declare that the head and not the tail, they're above and not beneath. And I just pray a blessing over them today in Jesus' name. Amen. See you guys next week.